Hello everyone and welcome back to the space. So today I'm here to introduce you to a very beautiful person inside outside and who is really intellectual in that. Recently he has written a very beautiful essay named The Missing Name. So we're gonna know more about his essay and uh, let me tell you he is also a professor in Dera Natun College and his name is Mr. Duli Ete. So let's know more about him and his publication. Sir, first of all, welcome to the space. Uh, could you tell us more about yourself first? Ate, thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, uh, my name is Dulu Ate and uh, I've been teaching history uh, in Dharanathan Government College since last uh, seven years. I have completed uh, my graduation, post-graduation and MPhil from the University of Delhi. And uh, my interest includes uh, gender history, art, archaeology and uh, I have also a specialization in ancient Indian history. So sir, uh, lately you have written an uh, essay, The Missing Name, right? Yeah. Missing Name. So uh, what does it foray into? Uh, this is a, a simple foray into the genealogical landscape of the Gallo community and there I have tried to, uh, you know, uh, uh, I have tried to uh, write a history of uh, the women in the Gallo communities and there I have relied on the genealogy and because uh, in our society genealogy is mostly made up of names there and uh, there I have tried to uh, you know examine whether there is a presence of women or not if there is if there is then what are their names if there is not then why they are not so that's why the the title is saying that the missing them because by missing them I am practically referring to the women what, what is the objective of your essay and uh, the missing name type? How, what, came, what struck your mind that you would entitle it as the mi missing name? Uh, the story is actually uh, very long. Uh, this is the, the story goes back uh, when, I, when I was in Delhi and doing my uh, research. And uh, doing uh, my research of you know, um, this uh, Buddhist sites, Bharut and Sanchi, there I found lots of names there, the donors. So, you know, it, uh, it struck me that if, you know, uh, we are looking at, you know, if we are going to look at the tribal history, we have to rely completely on the names, just like, uh, you know, we are relying on those names in those uh, Buddhist sites. So, since we do not have written documents, we have to rely on the genealogy which are made, uh, made up uh, names. So, I try to look at the significance of name in our Gala society and I felt that, you know, these names actually form the building block of history again because we do not have written doc documents we do not have an archaeological sources so name become very very important to understand the history and uh, when I looked at this general genealogy I felt that women are not there of course because our society is a patriarchal one uh, so I try to move beyond Abotani and uh, uh, try to explore whether there are presence of women or not so I had to go back to the the creator Jimmy and I right and I have to uh, from there I had to dig out the names and also uh, in this missing names I have used uh, uh, unconventional source uh, which has not been uh, deemed worthy for historical reconstruction for example um, I relied, relied heavily on uh, uh, the the oral texts uh, you know which are in the domain of women and also have used some of the you know prevalent social practices uh, within the Gala society and this is apart from the genealogy so I have used these sources and through this I would like to uh, you know uh, what I'm trying to do is to uh, you know visualize the presence of women in our society and also in the past sir I think this is your second yeah. publication yeah. so f uh, what was your first pu publication uh, my first publication was uh, about the serpent worship, which was which was part of my MPL uh, dissertation, and uh, there I have uh, tried to show that how you know actually the serpents, the visual imagery uh, imagery of the uh, serpent actually forms very crucial elements of kinship in ancient Indian uh, religion. So if you look at Buddhism, Jainism, and Hinduism, you will find a lot of snake imaginary mm -hmm. Im imagery, right? And I've tried to understand that what these, you know, uh, sim snake symbolism means. And uh, very interestingly, it was uh, published by the South Asian Review from the University of Columbia. And uh, I've been receiving very good, I have received very good response. 
So, sir, you are a professor right now. So, can we entitle you as an essayist as well? Um, you could say that, but I like to stick to the formal designation, <laughs> assistant professor. Yeah. Okay. So, sir, I have learned that you have also conducted a heritage work a lot of time. So, uh, can you brief us more about that? I started uh, my heritage work uh, way back in 2017. This was in collaboration with Sarpedia, New Delhi. And in this heritage work, I actually took my uh, student and the general public who were interested to the heritage sites across uh, Itanagar and Naharlagan. And there I have, uh, you know, I usually tell them about the different aspects of the history and that particular site which are usually not you know taught in the classroom because in classroom we are just confining ourselves to the syllabus and also from the examination point of view to, to make history more uh, you know interesting fun uh, I have started this uh, uh, heritage walk and I have uh, so far conducted uh, 11 heritage walks and um, of this I uh, also led uh, um, you know heritage walk as a part of India Heritage Walk Festival which is again uh, uh, in collaboration with uh, Sahipedia and UNESCO New Delhi and uh, it's really uh, interesting to see that you know my student and along with the, the general public are taking you know interest mm -hmm. uh, in learning and visiting these sites and I had a great time you know uh, exploring the heritage sites across Itanagar Nahalagan. Okay so uh, coming back to your essay missing name uh, what makes it different from the other essays and why people should read it? Wow. Uh, <laughs> uh, as far as um, I look at it, uh, my uh, essay Missing Names is different from the other, uh, you know, essay. It's, bec uh, it's primarily because I have attempted to write a gender history, okay. which has not been attempted, especially in the case of Arunachal Pradesh, as far as my knowledge goes. Uh, gender history is something, you know, which people have not paid much attention to so I felt you know uh, uh, with a little bit of work you know and digging up, digging up you know uh, the past I felt that you know uh, I could actually contribute to the more gender you know a neutral society and also to the greater understanding of uh, you know the relationship between men women and society and also I believe that it would help our government in uh, framing policies in the long run so uh, coming back to the question, yeah, so uh, the different in the way, uh, number one, the theme, thematically it's gender history. Secondly, the sources, which I've said, sources, uh, which is again unconventional. For a very long time, you know, uh, oral history has not been considered very worthy enough. And within this oral sources, what to say about the source which are in the domains of women? They were just treated as songs, lullabies, you know and not important for historical reconstruction. So that's one thing. And second is also the approach that I have used. I have uh, used uh, some of the anthropological, uh, you know, anthropological uh, methods, so to speak, uh, to analyze these historical texts. Okay. So, sir, uh, do you have any further vision of writing more essay in the, uh, in the future? Yes, definitely. There are a lot to write about. Uh, my personal uh, interests include gender, you know, uh, the oral history, the history of notice, history of religion, a lot many. So I am uh, yeah, working on some other aspects, for example, uh, I'm currently looking at uh, the, again I'm looking at the women sources which are, uh, you know, in the domain of women. And so I'm, I'm uh, working on the human-animal relationship, you know, a lot of uh, our folklore had laws of animals, the presence of animals are very strong. And I try to understand how, you know, actually animal has shaped us and how we have shaped the animals in the forms of, uh, you know, proverbs, songs. So, sir, as a professor and essayist, I must say, would you like to convey any message to our viewers? Yes, um, definitely. Uh, I feel that, you know, in the age of this fake news, uh, inundation of information, it's very important to do research. And... Uh, it become more interesting in the context of Arunachal Pradesh because we do not have written documents. And whatever is there, we are the villains, for example, the, the British records, right? So we need to rewrite the history. And it's the responsibility of us as, uh, since I'm the second generation, uh, so, you know, it's our responsibility to rewrite the history 
I also urge uh, you know the young scholars and the coming generations to explore different sources uh, you know uh, apply different approaches to understand our history heritage and cultures and I feel that you know our culture tradition history should not be just confined to festivals you know it should be the part of our everyday life you know and we must preserve and cherish especially our oral tradition because with the you know uh, modernization we are losing our language and language actually holds the key to understanding our culture so before our language you know fades out fades away we must document it preserve it and cherish it thank you sir thank you for being with us today thank you so